Hello, scouts. It's Mr. Kugler, and we're back outside, kind of close to the fire pit, but today we're going to focus in on camp hygiene, and the scout is clean, and we want to make sure that whether we're at home or we're out in the woods camping, that we're practicing safe uh, hygiene and that our campsite is clean and that our hands are clean. And that could be a challenge in the woods when you're cooking and cleaning up and camping, especially in colder climates where keeping water uh, warm uh, can be a challenge and wanting to wash your hands when it's cold uh, can be even more of a deterrent. So one of the tricks that we used to use was these laundry detergent containers to be able to hold the water and then be able to release it on this little tap. Now in New England, where I'm from, in January and February when it's cold, this water would be really cold. And quite honestly, scouts really don't want to be sticking their hands in freezing cold water in the middle of January or February in Connecticut. So we switched over to these insulated jugs that are used for water. So just like in the summer where you would load these up with ice and drinking water, uh, they keep it cold. In the winter, you could put warmer water in and it'll keep it warm. One of the challenges, however, in working uh, when you're handling either raw meat or in this uh, time frame uh, that I'm shooting the video where there's a lot of COVID concerns and scouts are having to be extra careful when we go camping, is when everybody handling this little spout, uh, it could get dirty. The other thing is, is that when you're releasing the water, um, it takes one hand to release the water and the other hand to put underneath, and you can't quite wash your hands and lather up uh, unless you have help from somebody else pushing uh, the button in. So what I wanted to do was come up with some type of a contraption that would be useful to a scout uh, that uses products that could be bought at a store uh, and easily assembled uh, for use in a hand washing station. So here's the contraption that I came up using a standard five gallon insulated water jug uh, and using some readily available plumbing parts uh, to be able to create a device uh, with a valve that'll hold hot water or warm water. Now I handled it with my hand, but it's designed so that a scout could come in and open it up, wash their hands, and then be able to close it with their elbow or their forearm without handling it with their hands. Uh, so this is a great way not only to be able to lather underneath, but to do it with one scout opening and closing the valve without having to touch it. I have it strapped down because as the water gets lower, the container is going to be um, not as heavy and it's going to have a tendency to move. I'll go over the design of this with this valve, but this particular valve opens very easily. You don't need a lot of force to be able to open and close it. So we'll take a little time out. We're going to head into the shop and I'm going to show you how to assemble this hand washing station. Let's take a quick run through of the different parts that we use to be able to make our hand washing station. And I'll give a complete list of these. Uh, parts as well. Uh, so if you want to be able to go and do it, I'm using a Rubbermaid five gallon insulated jug. This one happens to be branded obviously by Home Depot, uh, but it's it's a Rubbermaid brand. And this may vary depending upon the thickness of the uh, the wall of the cooler that you have to go through. I know I this is actually the third uh, brass nipple that I ended up buying to be able to find the right length one. I have a half inch uh, brass ball valve. Uh, both ends of this are threaded uh, to be able to accept the parts. So that's a key thing uh, to uh, to have. I used just a PVC half inch uh, elbow. Uh, this is happens to be threaded on both sides, uh, but provided that you have the threaded uh, male end here uh, to go into the valve is all that's critically important on this. Uh, to be able to hold it in place, I use two of these faucet couplings. Uh, one of the uh, half-inch faucet couplings came with a washer, and the other two are just uh, the, uh, the nuts. What's important about these faucet nuts is the wide base that they have, and that helps stabilize it as it goes through. It can't be too large because then it won't fit uh, in the, uh, on the surface here. Uh, but you don't want it too small because with this valve sticking out, there's a lot of leverage that can go on there uh, that can create a problem and make it unstable. 
the handle that I have is nothing more than a seven inch long piece of half inch plumbing conduit. And what I did is I took and I crushed down um, a portion, I was able to crush it down just enough to fit over the rubber uh, covering of this valve handle. The reason why I use the ball valve is the ball valve only requires a 90 degree pivot of the handle to be able to fully open the valve uh, versus a gate valve which you would screw on and off um, and would take several revolutions and putting the extension which makes this possible to operate with one person uh, with your elbow or forearm it's important that we have something that turns on and off just with that 90 degree turn. As I mentioned this is nothing more than a seven inch piece of uh, plumbing conduit copper pipe uh, with an end cap on it and the end cap uh, you could sweat or you know solder it on using plumbing solder, uh, but we're not worried about it holding water. Uh, so I use some Gorilla Glue super glue uh, to be able that works in joining metal to metal uh, to be able to glue this cap on uh, to the fitting. The tools that I used were a tubing cutter uh, to be able to cut the copper tubing. Uh, some of these adjustable pliers, these are the channel locks adjustable pliers, two of those. Uh, and then I also use some Teflon tape. Uh, you could use some plumber's uh, putty that goes on thread putty. Uh, it makes sure that the water doesn't leak out around the threads of the, the brass nipple. Uh, it's not underneath a lot of pressure, uh, but it does help. It also helps hold it in place because uh, one of the concerns is with the leverage and everything going on here, if it gets used too much, it could end up spinning. So that helps hold it in place. I use the vise that's in the background here to be able to crush down the pipe. But you certainly could use a hammer and be able to crush it down uh, to be able to do that as well. So let's take a quick run through of the actual process of assembling our hand washing station. Our first step is to remove the existing spout out of the water jug. The spout is held in with a locking nut that's on the inside and a gasket. If I had had some trouble getting the nut to release on the inside, I certainly could have used our adjustable pliers. Comes with a gasket, and we're going to reuse this gasket, and then the spout. So we'll save this so if we ever want to return this to its normal use, that we'll have the parts uh, to be able to do that. So the first step in assembling our valve for our hand washing station is to take one of the faucet coupling nuts and to take and tighten it onto the two inch brass nipple. Now, what I want to do is have it so that the concave portion is towards the center of the nipple. That's going to rest up against the face of the cooler. With the faucet nut, run down the threads as far as it can go. I'm going to now take and wrap the Teflon tape around the threads of the nipple. And I went clockwise around the thread so that when I go to tighten the valve on, it doesn't back the Teflon tape off. Now what I'll do is I'll start with the valve with the portion that is um, on the opposite side of the arrow, and I'll just tighten this on. With my adjustable pliers, I'm able to tighten down on the part of the nipple that doesn't have the threads and be able to tighten up the valve. So with that tightened, I'm going to now take and put the washer that came along with one of the coupling nuts onto uh, the nipples so that the washer rests up against the back of the coupling nut. This will help give it some firmness when it rests up against the body of the cooler. Before I put my valve assembly through the body of the cooler, I want to put the Teflon tape on the threads before I put it in. This is much easier than trying to do it with the valve assembly in place.
before I put the valve assembly, I'm going to take this gasket that came along with the cooler and I'm going to put it inside from the back side of the cooler and make sure it's seated properly with the portion of the gasket that is made to stick into the opening. So with that in place and holding it in place, I'll now carefully put the valve assembly through the opening. With that in place, I'll now take the other faucet coupling nut and put it on the inside and screw it in place. And although I can hand tighten it, I also have the advantage of opening the valve and tightening it using the valve as well. So once I have it tightened and seated nicely, I can move on to our next step. This 90 degree elbow simply redirects the water down into the overflow bucket and onto our hands. Uh, it, I suppose you could put some uh, Teflon tape on this, but I found that it, it seats fine. Uh, it's under no pressure. Uh, so I simply just take and screw it into the end of the valve. If you need a little bit of help at the end, you could take and get two pairs of the adjustable pliers, put one on one part, one on the other, and just help it. You want to be able to have the elbow pointing directly down onto your hands and falling into with the excess water falling into your bucket on the ground. So our next step is to take a piece of half inch copper tubing and I found that seven inches is a good length. I'm just going to take and mark it. Pipe tubing cutter works well here, but you can also use a hacksaw. One of the things that's important here is to make sure that any burr that's on the inside of here uh, is taken down before uh, you use it because with it sliding over the plastic on our valve here, if this has a sharp edge to it, it's going to ruin the plastic or rubber that's on that. So tubing cutters typically come with this tool here that is helpful in knocking off any burrs or sharp edges that Come on, you can also take some sandpaper and be able to knock that down. And also, another trick is to use a drill bit like this that you could come in and knock that down with. You could even do it by hand uh, to be able to knock down those burrs and then be able to take some sandpaper to the end. On the other end, which I really don't have to worry about, is where I'm going to put this um, cap. This is nothing more than a copper end cap. Uh, plumbing fitting and I'm just simply going to take some super glue without getting it on my hands I'm just going to take and put some of that on the inside edge of this and then simply just take the end cap and put it over the pipe in about a minute or so that'll be dry and it'll be uh, ready to use so the last step is to take this copper tubing and crush it down enough so that it'll fit over the handle of our ball valve. So I'm going to take and put this in a vise. This is one of those things where it may take a couple trips back and forth to the vise to make sure that you have it the right length. If you go a little too far, it could create some problems and have it too, uh, too much play in it. And I need to do a little bit more. So second time was a charm, slides on there nicely, 
and our valve opens and closes. And we've got our spigot all set up. So there we have it. Our hand washing station valve assembly mounted into the five gallon jug with a seven inch long piece of half inch copper tubing with an end cap just for safety purposes. Uh, that is removable. I would remove this. <laughs> Hopefully the, uh, if the plastic comes off, just slide it back on your valve. I would remove this for traveling uh, so that it doesn't uh, stick out and get in the way, get caught. You could put this, store this right inside the, uh, the water cooler. Uh, but there you go with the valve assembly mounted in. It's nice and firm and ready to use for your hand washing station. So I hope this gadget is helpful to your troops so that you can get out and have clean hands while you're camping using warm water. So get out there with your fellow patrol mates and troop mates. Get out there and have some fun camping and enjoy yourself in the great outdoors.